In this tutorial, we're going to translate one of our final custom blocks here, extract words and sentences from lines. Remember, right at the start of this series, we, we created a constant list here of all of those lines. In the next video, we're going to import a text-based list, but for now, we're just going to use this list. We're going to introduce a new looping mechanism in this tutorial, and it's called using a for loop. And we're going to iterate or loop over each item in this list to read the lines. So let's scroll down and get stuck into it. Hey crew, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, and on this channel, I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journeys. Welcome back to our From Scratch to Python series where we're trying to dip your toes in the deep end of a text-based programming language and that one is Python. We've created a project in Scratch, a spelling game, and we're trying to translate it across into Python. We're about five or six videos into this series, so go check the card in the top right hand corner to check out some earlier videos or grab a link to the starter project down in the description. First thing that we need to do is create our function definition of extracting the word and sentences from lines. So I'm just going to make that a plural, and this is going to be a function that we're not going to pass it any parameter here. And don't forget that colon. Okay, so here over in Scratch, we've got two lists that were created. We've got sentences and words, and we delete them all at the start. And the way to do that, the way to do that in Python is to simply just create some new lists here. We can create a new list by just using this square bracket notation. Another way that you could initialize that is just by calling the list constructor here. So this is like a list function, and this is just going to create a new list. It really doesn't matter which one you use. And sometimes you wanna convert things to lists and you wanna use this list constructor. But for the simplicity, I'm just going to create two square bracket new lists here. Now imagine this a couple of times. I've said that these variables are local variables. There are also variables called global variables. Now, what on earth is the difference between these two? I'm gonna click the green play button here. I nearly said flag, but you'll see that since I've clicked this and if I type in words, you might think, oh yeah, we're gonna get a reference to this list here. But in fact, we don't. It's telling us here that words is not defined. That's a bit of a problem. Why is that the case? Well, the reason for that is the word kind of lives in the function here, well, it doesn't kind of, it lives in the house of this function. And if we try and reference anything inside the house, well, we can't get to it because it's locked in there. When we're in the console, we're out here on the street and we're trying to access these things on the house and currently we don't have any way to do it. If we wanted to access words, we would need to create a words variable outside of here, okay? And then inside of this local function, we would need to put this keyword global and say words. Now this list refers to the global list outside of here. You can see that when I get rid of the word global, we've got a green little squiggly line under our words here. And this is telling us that this variable is no longer being used. But if I click the run button again, and now I refer to that words list, you'll see that we're getting that empty list. And just to really underscore the difference between these two, I'm gonna put a value inside of this list and I'm gonna call it global. I'll put another value inside of this list and I'm gonna call it local. I'm going to hit the run button there. I'm going to access that words and you see that we're getting the global list here. Now inside of our function here, if I put the keyword global and a reference to the variable that I wanna use that is global, any reference going forward is now going to reference the global variable. So what do you think will happen now as we run this project? and I type in words, what value do you think we're gonna get here? We still get global. Hmm, what's going on here? The reason is we haven't actually called this function yet, so we haven't changed the value of words. So let's go ahead and call the function. It'll do its work. Now we'll find out what the reference to our words is here, and you can see we've changed it to local. So we've actually gone in and we've changed that global variable to be assigned to this new list here. So that's just a little quick crash course on the difference between local variables and global variables. I'll leave a link in the description for a little bit more reading on that. And there's probably a super video that explains the difference between these two, I'll link to in the top right hand corner as well. But for now, I'm gonna get rid of our global definitions here and we're gonna reset this back to an empty list. Okay, let's jump on to the next part of this tutorial and we're going to be introduced to for loops. What is a for loop? Well, 
A for loop means that we just iterate over something. And the thing that we're going to iterate over is that list of lines that we have up the top. The way that a for loop works is we can type the keyword for, and the next piece of the syntax is the item in the list, right? And the item for us is going to be a line. So for the line inside the list of lines. Now, what does this refer to up here? Well, if we scroll up the top, you can see that we've got a global constant list of all these individual lines. So if we scroll down, a for loop is simply just going to iterate over each of these lines. And of course we need a colon character there at the end. And if we jump over to scratch now, you can see that we've kind of replicated what's going on here. We've got a variable here calling line num, and we've got this repeat and we're repeating for the length of the lines. Well, that's what this for loop is gonna do as well. It's saying, all right, for the line in lines, and it's saying all the lines. So that's what we're doing here. We're repeating something for the length of lines. And what we want to repeat is the split line functionality that we determined up here. So we can get our multiple variable assignment and get our word and sentence here. We call that split line function that we created earlier and we can pass it the line here. So in all the references to line that we've been using for all of our functions so far, this is where it starts. This is the top of the tree or the bottom, depending on how you want to look at it. This is where we're getting that line and we're feeding it to all the functions that depend on it. And remember in the last tutorial, when we have this split line function, it's returning a tuple of a word and a sentence. And a tuple is just a list that we cannot change. Okay. We know that the first value of that tuple is going to be the word and the second value is going to be sentence. So we can use that multiple variable assignment there to help us out that we chatted about in that last video. Okay, to really help visualize what on earth is going on here, let's jump over to Python Tutor to check it out. Okay, I'm over here in Python Tutor, link in the description if you wanna go suss it out as well. Let's visualize this execution. You can see I've just got our list of lines here. Uh, I can step through this and it's basically just going to encode all of our lines. So I'm going to just run through all of that. Now we've started here at our for loop and this is where it all gets interesting. Okay, so it's executed the first line here and we've printed nothing. So let's jump into it and it's going to print the first line in line. So see here, this is our lines constant list that we are referring to and it's getting the first line. It's iterating over the first line. Let's click next and we have just printed that output to the screen. So we've just printed that line. Now it's going to go get the next line in that list and the next line is Bath. You can see that. Then we're going to print Bath. Let's get the next line. It's going to be apologize and we'll print apologize to the list and so forth. See how it's just stepping over each of these lists and that's what a for loop does. It just says, all right, let's go through and cycle through all of these values. Now there's a couple of other ways that we could do this, but I'm conscious I don't wanna bust your brain here. I will leave a link to the description for for loops and iteration uh, down below. So go and check that out as well. Okay, let's jump back across to Replit. The next thing we wanna do is do something with this word and sentence that we're getting. We just don't wanna print it to the console. What we wanna do is insert it inside of these lists because back over here in Scratch, that's what we're doing. We're adding the output of the word to that list. And in the last tutorial, I said that, yeah, we don't wanna do that inside of the extract word function because it's just a bit messy because that function extract word from line, we just want it to do that one thing. We don't want it to do too much, all right? Here, we're extracting the words and sentences from line. So there's plural going on here, we're extracting it, and then we're adding them to the words and sentences. So let's go ahead and do that. You need to stay on the line of indentation for this for loop. And we want to refer to the words list. And you can see we're now referring to it. That green squiggly line just went away. Now there's a word called append. And the word append here is a function on a list. And we can just add whatever we want to it onto the end of the list. We'll append it onto it. And we're going to append the word. We can do the same thing for our sentences. Let's append the sentence that we just extracted. So you got a little typo there. Let's put our dot syntax back there. And just to finish this up, we can return our words and our sentences, and this will return those two lists. If I click the run button here, 
and we just call that function. With any luck, we will see two lists, one of words and one of sentences. Great, now that's a little bit hard to see. I'm just gonna quickly import a Python library just to clean this up so you can see it a little bit neater. Okay, I've just gone ahead and imported a module called pprint and it stands for pretty print. And I'm just going to call pprint dot pprint. And then we can just pass in that function that we created. If I scroll down, we're gonna get the words and the sentences and it's gonna handle it for us. And now let's just give ourselves a little bit of space and you can see that we've just returned a list. You can tell that by the opening of the square bracket and the closing. There's our list of our words and a list of our sentences here. And you can see that we've just got a little space there. I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. We can strip that out, but I'll let you Google that. How do you strip a white space character from a string? Well, awesome job on making it through this tutorial. We've essentially got all the functionality that we need to get our text-to-speech working here. But before we do that, there's something wrong with our project. We're still using a hard-coded list and we wanna go through and create that text file that we've been using in our Scratch project. We wanna utilize that because we only wanna create the thing once. And that's what we'll do in the next tutorial. We're going to implement this read lines functionality. And interestingly enough, I'm gonna show you a couple of one-liners that is pretty much gonna do everything that we've done in one function here, which is gonna be pretty gnarly stuff. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. But until then, I'm off to go outside, enjoy this gorgeous weather, find a wave, and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>